spirit well hello how are y'all today welcome to talk to me spirit um channel this is a judgment free channel don't judge me and i will not judge you all is welcome if you're new to the channel welcome thank you please hit that subscribe button i appreciate it i do curse so if cursing offends you then i am not the reader for you what's poppin my talk to me spirit fam thank you for the love thank you for the comments thank you for the subscribes thank you for so support you don't know how much that means to me and once again for all those that are watching thank you for watching thank you for letting me guide you and be a part of your spiritual journey i know that this spiritual journey is a very very difficult one Yahweh never said it was going to be easy. He never said that. You hear me say, and you might have heard other, a lot of other people say, that you chose this path. Everything that you endured, they, you knew you can go through this. And all your enemies, they couldn't walk a mile in your shoes. They couldn't be able to handle everything that you went through. Everybody thinks spirituality is all light and gravy, baby, but it's not. There's a dark side to it. You hear people talking about the chosen ones. There's a total of 144 chosen, but Yahweh didn't say 104, 100, 104,000, billion, trillion, zillion, million. He just said the 144. The other 144 consists of the 72 angels and the 72 Goatias, light and dark, okay? They were once upon all together in the kingdom, but some of them got cocky, power hungry, greedy, tried to manipulate Yahweh, tried to take over his throne, and Yahweh said no, and they got cast down. That's why they call it the Goatias, the 72. But there's more, there's billions and trillions of different types of angels. So there's many, many of them. But you only hear about the 144. 144 is a very special number. People say, how do you know that you're chosen? Everyone is gifted. We have many, 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 many gifts. Everyone is gifted. Okay, but that doesn't mean you chose it. Only a few are called. Only few answers to call. Okay? Yahweh calls a lot, but only a few call it's answers to call. There, I am a storyteller. That's one of my gifts. Storyteller, I'm not talking about lying. I'm talking about breaking things down so y'all be able to understand. Just like how the Native Americans would sit by a, a fire and the chief or the shaman or the witch doctor, whatever you want to call them, was they would all smoke the pipe, the peace pipe. And he would tell you what spirit said. They call him the storyteller for those that didn't know what I meant. So imagine two people in the bed. We're going to say a male and female. It doesn't matter if they married or not. I do not own rights to the music in the background, okay? But two in the bed, they both gifted. They both are spiritual. They both are in the same religion or practice, whatever you want to call it. Yahweh chose the man. So what Yahweh did, he, he gave life until the man's spirit. And he woke him up and he heard his call, sort of like the resurrection. So when his spirit arose, he knew that he was different from his spouse. I must just say they married their spouse. She knew he was different or whatever. And she would get in her feelings. She would say, they would, they would talk to her spiritual advisor. Okay? Every person have a spiritual advisor. Some are called preachers. Some are called evangelists. Some are called prophets, prophetesses. Some are called mambos, hoguns. Some are called babalos. Some are called yayays. Some is called whatever you want to do it. Call it. They're spiritual advisors. Some spiritual advisors are dark. Some spiritual advisors are, are, are light. Yes, Spirit says some are called high priests, some are called high priestess. But everyone has a spiritual advisor. So she noticed her husband was acting different. So they both spoke to the spiritual advisor. 
and she's like we both gifted i'm gifted just like him i can see just like him or whatever make a long story short the spiritual advisor consulted with the spirits and the spiritual advisor came back and said well your husband is chosen and she took it some type of way and she's like why she always been cutthroat. She always like quick to fight. If someone was fighting, she was quick to say, I do this, I do this, I'm gonna work this person. And her husband used to say, everything is not casting spells. Sometimes you need to fight mentally. Sometimes, you know, everybody, everything is not your fight. Sometimes you gotta let Yahweh and the spirits do it. But the wife was like all angry, like, no, I'm gonna make sure he or she loses everything. I'm gonna make somebody get in an accident and paralyze them. The story is her heart was corrupt. Her heart was cold like cement. Once again, Yahweh sees your heart. So he didn't pick her. He didn't take her gifts away, but he didn't make her chosen because the power that he would have gave her bestowed upon her, she would have used it the wrong way. So he gave the husband the gifts, extra gifts and powers that she wanted because his heart was not like that. He had a heart of a lamb, very humble. If you notice, Yeshua's uh, spirit animal was a lamb. A lamb was meek and humble. Yeshua took a lot from people, even from the ones that betrayed him, that was his homeboys. He took a lot, but he remained humble. Remaining humble don't make you a punk. Remember, you always hear me say, he who angers you control you. Because sometimes your spirit will say, sit back. I got this one. Because how are you going to fight something that you can't see? How are you going to defeat something that you can't see? Spirits will defend you when you have not done nothing wrong. They will retaliate on that person that did you wrong. Some call it justice. Some call it karma. But spirits will do that when they know you haven't done nothing wrong, but show love and compassion to these people. That's why they said, be careful how you do a chosen person because Yahweh is not going to take that down. And then you wonder why all of a sudden your life is upside down because they, the spirits took your security blanket from you, took your protection because some of y'all are protected under a chosen one. What do you mean by that? If you around a certain person and all of a sudden you start taking your power and your energy, everything away, you've taken away that protection. It's like you remove the umbrella. Another way I'm going to break it down to you. Two people sitting under the tree and it's like 110 outside. One person's always pouring libations to the tree and leaving little fruits and stuff there. And the other person said, why are you doing that? That's wasting. You know, there's people starving and stuff, but the other person just kept quiet because, you know, he said, this person's ignorant. He does not know what he do. He does not know what he's saying. So they keep doing this for a week straight. But all of a sudden, a man that always feed and water the tree had something else to do. So the other man sat there. So he didn't say grateful to the tree or anything thank you for the shade so the tree just automatically took his shade somewhere else so the man got angry and started cursing at the tree started kicking the tree said i want you to cut down i curse you and stuff like that because he was ungrateful he felt like the tree was obligated to give him shade he felt like that was the tree's job no it's not that tree said, no, you didn't get thanks. He only did that because the other person honored the tree, gave it water, fed the spirits, fed the animals, things like that. When you are very ungrateful and spirits tell you to cut another person off because they are an energy vampire, they always using you, they never pour into you, they always take, spirits will pull the protection over them. So this person is going to feel everything. And then they're gonna think you don't doing something to them because you're no longer interested in hanging around them. Every time y'all meant to get together, something happens, you just stop talking to them because that person was using you the wrong way. So 
that's the reason why certain people have certain gifts. I hope that makes sense to y'all. You have to understand every fight is not your fight. Your spirits will handle it. When you take care of your spirits and honor your spirits, they will go to hell and back for you. Spirit is also telling me to tell y'all, only one God, he is the God of all gods, he is the God of the universe, his name is Yahweh, is omnipresent. He can be everywhere, anytime. He can be with me, what now, you, you, you. He can be everywhere. That's what omnipresent means. Other gods and goddesses, deities can't. Other spirits can't. That's why Yahweh assigned you, your own personal spirit guide that follows you, your own personal guardian. And people's like, no, no, no. If you go back into the Old Testament of the Bible, all prophets was assigned a spirit to walk with them, to comfort them. What do you think the Holy Spirit is? It's a comforting spirit that walks with you and protects you. So every person that is of spirit, special, prophet, prophetess, priest, priestess, whatever you call yourself, you are assigned your own personal spirit guide and your own personal guardian angel that helps you in your time of trouble. When they can't do it and you need more assistance, then he will assign other gods. He would say, go help that person, go help that person that they need you. Spirits have to choose you. Sometimes they say, can I be with that person and help that person? And he says, okay. So everyone, so when someone think what you're doing is evilness, is devil work or something like that, that is not true. Yes, some people do. Yes, some people do. But not all spiritualists are devil worshipers. In the in the in the Bible, they talk about the uh, the holy covenant. It's like an altar piece, and they call people there a spiritual advisor, high priest, and high priestess. They were only allowed to look upon the uh, the holy grail or the altar, 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 okay, the covenant, the holy covenant, whatever it's called, I can't think right now, my mind is going blank, but only a high priest and high priestess can touch it, sometimes, Yahweh puts a special cloak on y'all, and when I say you're divinely protected, or if you have readings by people that says you're divinely protected, it doesn't mean to go out there and do something stupid. It just said that no one can take your life unless Yahweh says it's your time and that you're protected by spirits, okay? So when someone says you're divinely protected, it's not saying to go out there and start starting a war. Sometimes y'all start fights with people, spiritual fights, and that person has really never done nothing to you. It's because they took their power and their energy away from you. So they took their protection away from you. And you automatically get in your ego. Because ego gets people fucked up. And you start saying, oh, this person is doing something to me. And that's how spiritual wars start over jealousy. Then you wonder why you have the gift that you have. And you wonder why you're not elevating. Okay? Y'all also got to look at that too. What messages? And it's funny, this came up when I was talking about a high priest and high priestess. Spirit is telling me that a prophet has a higher rank than an evangelist, than a preacher, than a bishop. There's ranks to everything. Spirit also want me to let you tell y'all every seer is a prophet but every prophet is not a seer and what do i mean like that every prophet does not get a vision from yahweh every prophet cannot see some prophet is just you can be clairsentient but that doesn't mean that you can see there's a difference between a seer and a soothsayer y'all need to know the difference all right a lot of y'all are stepping into 
what's the meaning of this video is saying a lot of y'all get ready get called Yahweh is about to awaken y'all spirit this is what I'm trying to say and I know it's like I'm I'm going around the bush, but I hope this is not a complicated reading. But a lot of y'all get ready to be called to lead. Y'all getting ready to be called, and your life on this spiritual journey is not going to be easy. A lot of y'all are feeling oppressed. Y'all feeling locked up. Y'all feeling like y'all a victim. Spirit is saying, that's about to end. Okay, a lot of things are getting ready to start opening for you. A lot of y'all are getting ready to step into your power. You are about to be seen. It's because Yahweh is about to waken up your spirit. You're going to be like with people that's gifted just like you, but you're going to be chosen and they're not. They are going to be envious and jealous of you. They're going to start doing stuff to you because they want to know why you got it and you didn't. If you look at their heart, you will see why. Because they're greedy. they power hungry. They want to hurt people because they refuse to let their ego die. A lot of y'all are going to fall in love. Because y'all about to meet someone that is chosen with you. A chosen one would be put with a chosen one. Alright? But a love is in the air. It's time for y'all to come together. A lot of y'all are going to be falling in love with you and your spirits. A lot of y'all are getting ready to start traveling on this spiritual journey. Some on this physical realm and some in the, uh, in the spiritual realm. But a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all are getting ready to get y'all feelings hurt. Y'all going to cry. Y'all going to say, I don't want this anymore. But baby, like I said, you are part of the 144. Those who have ears to hear what I have to say. This is not for everyone. And everybody's not going to like what I have to say. But I'm obedient. I'm talking to the chosen ones of the 144 that got that call. You know you different. You know you get a lot of jealous and envy spiritual people attacking you. You say, we sisters. Some of them is in your own family. Once again, that is not your blood family. But y'all are starting to waking up. And I know y'all are like, what type of reading is this? I have to be obedient. So I had to say this. Your life is not going to be easy. Because he never said it was going to be easy. But you are going to make it. You're going to get taken care of. You might not be Jay-Z rich, but you will never go hungry. Your children will never go hungry. They might be eating peanut butter jelly all the time or rice all the time, but there's food on the table. You're going to be taken care of. A lot of y'all got fired. There's a reason why y'all got fired. Because y'all was getting too comfortable and it's time for you to step. You was called. They're going to make sure money's going to come in. Yes, you might have to move into family to save up money. Yes, you might have to downsize. Yes, you might have to sell some of that stuff that you shouldn't have bought in the other way. But you will be taken care of. It is time. If you notice, time is speeding up. Now, all of a sudden, it's Thursday. You're like, damn. All of a sudden, we can right hit April. Damn, spring is already here. Time is speeding up. Things are starting to happen. Things are starting to happen. You're starting to see the signs. Yahweh is tired of his people being hurt. So he is breathing life into the chosen ones. And y'all waking up. And some of it, y'all want to cry because you feel like this is unfair. But I have to remind you, it was written in the book of the life. Once Yahweh give you glasses, you cannot take it off. There's no turning back. There's no closing that door. A lot of y'all, once again, are walking the path of Yeshua. Yeshua suffered, suffered, but he was never hungry. He always had a place to lay his head. He was always taken care of. You will always be taken care of, but it might not be how you want yet, but it is coming. Your rewards is coming. But I'm speaking to the ones that are chosen. I know it's difficult right now. And I know you feel like giving up. Yeshua said, take thy cup away from me. I don't want it. And Yahweh said, no. When Yeshua was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights upon that cliff, he prayed, but he also meditated. And when he meditated, the enemy was messing with him but he did not fold.
The enemy is going to mess with you because you have a calling. The enemy knows that they're about to lose and they don't want you to walk in yours. So they throwing everything at you left and right. Your family forsaking you. You getting fired. You getting evicted. All of a sudden your car is breaking down because they want you to give up. When you going through this, you're very close to your breakthrough. Trust me, I've been there where a lot of y'all. I do not look like what I've been through, but I've been through a lot. Just trust and have faith in Yahweh when he say, I got this, I got this. There's a church saying that say he's an on-time God. He might not come when you need him, but he's always there. You might think he's forsaking you, but he has never forsaken you. This is when you're going to get tempted and people are going to say, you need to do this and do this. If something is given to you easy, it's not going to last. It's the trick of the spirit. It's the trick of the enemy. If you have to endure everything and it's hard, that means it can never be taken from you. It will never fall. You want to build your foundation on solid ground, not on weak foundation because soon as an earthquake come it's going to crumble soon as a hurricane come it's going to tumble down job was one of the richest men in the bible job everybody think that the devil or whoever you call the devil went to yahweh but yahweh went to the devil and say, I want you to try to tempt Job. I want to test his faith. You have my permission, but you cannot touch his life. Job lost everything. Job broke out in sores. Job's wives, he had many wives. Back then they had many wives. Some of them died. Some of his children died. He lost everything. But he would not curse Yahweh. He endured. I'm sure he cried. I'm sure he said, why is this happening to me? I'm sure he got depressed. I'm sure he drunk their wine because they couldn't drink the water. I'm sure he did all that. But he did not curse Yahweh. He kept the faith. Soon as he passed the test and the devil came up to Yahweh, he said he won't fold. He won't break. He got triple of everything that was taken from him. Sometimes you go through a test. To see if you're going to fold. Or if you see if you're going to give up. Or you're going to give off your word. Because like I said. It was written in blood in the book of the life. Sometimes you be tested by spirit. To see your heart. So basically if you can't handle the pressure right now. And you ask them to rise to the top. How are you going to handle the pressure at the top? Because you can't even have, handle the devils at the low. The higher the level, the bigger the devil. So if you can't handle the lows, baby, how in the hell are you going to handle the highs? You're always tested. I leave you with peace, love, and light. I shall.